Good morning again. Good to see you, church. And it's a pleasure to stand before you and bring the word this morning. I also want to say for those who are listening to us on the internet, you can get more about the church at www.pathaug.net. Dot org. I'm sorry, dot org. Yes, pathaug.org. All right. So if I get into the message this morning, as usual, I like to always put a little prayer in there for myself to calm me down because I had a half a cup of coffee this morning. I'm still wired. So I need, I need a little calming down. So bow your heads and go with me in prayer. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for being up here. Give me the strength, the guidance, the wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding that I might pass your word on. I rely on Psalms 4, 1914, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. You know, um, the, the, the choir sounds so good. The, the pastor was celebrating. It's been a year since uh, he's been really sick and he's back. And it made me want you to, to think. You know, when you didn't know where you were going, God knew. When you didn't know you needed a savior, God knew. When you thought that you were finished, you had no more strength. You couldn't go no further. God knew and he strengthened you. That's our God. The one that we share with everybody. But today I'm going to talk to you about a powerful verse in the Old Testament. And it's from Exodus, Exodus 23, verse 20. Exodus 23, verse 20. I'm going to read it to you. This is the uh, King James Version. Let the words of my... I'm sorry. <laughs> Exodus 20, 23, NIV. So I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way to bring you to the place I have prepared. And I like that translation, but the NLT, to me, really hits it real good. It says, the journey starts... Right? And he said, see, I am sending an angel before you to protect you on your journey and lead you safely to the place I have prepared for you. Now, regardless of which translation you look at, that first word, see, sometimes it's translated behold. Sometimes it's even translated lo. And the Hebrew word is hene. And basically... It is, a, it is a, surely I will. Surely. And the, the, the root word is hain, which carries a, 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 a sense of surprise. So in this chapter, as earlier on up, as God is giving them some rules and regulations, some things so that you should be honest about, justice and all these good things, he finally comes there, and it is almost like they're there. They didn't even expect God to, number one, say, I'm going to send an angel. See, but they were, wow. This would have been a wow. You know, this would have been a wow moment for them if God is doing this. Now, up above, remember I tell you, they even talking about justice and honesty and whatnot. One of the things that was up above was that these people were supposed to what? Plant the land. You've heard this. Plant the land for six years, and then on the seventh year, let, let the land work. I mean, rest. Well, I guess this is more for the guys. Guys, because we always got the honey-do list. But, you know, you see, we came from the earth, so I guess we need our seventh day too, don't we? Okay, so, so, so when, she, when, she, when, she, when she give you the long honey-do list, you can say, well, you know, is, does this fall into seventh day here? <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can borrow another day from the other month. But anyhow, God is truthful and, and, and he's ambitious with them and, and he's going to help them. And so I decided that we'll, we'll, we'll look at this verse and we'll, we'll, we'll dig down in it a little bit and just see what we can get out of it so that we can apply it, apply it to our life. Because truth be spoken, we are all on a journey. Not just as individual right now, but even as a church, we're on a journey. We're headed somewhere. As a whole, we are, and as individuals. These Israelites, they're all going to the promised land, but all of them are a tad bit different. Some are carpenters, or some are 
Skins means, I mean, they, they're all different types, but they go into one place. And that's us, church. So let's, let's break down some of it. First of all, we talked about God's guidance in this. We can witness God's living and loving initiative of loving these people by seeing an angel ahead. And, and, uh, uh, and I wouldn't get into any word etymology, which, but this angel here has also a sense of, if you watch a Western, I, you know, I'm a Western fanatic, you know, you had the sheriff. And when the sheriff needs some help, he deputizes people. Right? And they go out and they execute the law with the authority of the sheriff's office. That's what this angel is going to do. He's going to execute what has to be done with the power of God. God's power will be manifested through this angel. Okay? Uh, and that's not just, um, he's just going to be in the front of them and say, okay, y'all follow me. This is protection around the clock. Front, back, left, and right. Total protection. Okay? So this angel is being sent to guide them. And that signifies to me that God is not distant. He's not this God that's so far out there that we can't talk to him and he don't, he don't care about us and he's not involved with our lives. He is. Okay? So, you know, um, he's not indifferent, but he's actively involved in our life. And just as he's guided those Israelites through the wilderness toward that promised land, he desires to guide us through these unpredictable journeys of life that we have to grow through. And you know how it is. One day it can seem like everything is under control. Man, everything is going great. And then something comes across your path. It could be a person. I call them the dark people. You know, it, you know they go, all they do is bring darkness with them. They don't bring no sunshine. They don't bring, they're, they're dark, you know? And, um, they, they don't ever have anything to say. I think we say here in the West, misery loves company. <laughs> okay? They come and they just, I mean, they just put, put a damper on your whole day. Well, don't let that get you down. Take comfort that God is going before you, clearing the path, and preparing a way to that future that he has for you. There's no doubt about it. What God has for you, nobody can take. Nobody can take. I've even tried, you know, there's some people say, well, I don't know if God has blessed me for this or that or whatever. I wish I could tell them, well, if you don't want it, can I have it? But, but that's not, I can't get what God has blessed them with, you know? Can't have it. So, as you're on your journey, you have protection. You have that presence of God with us. And when you don't think it's there, it's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. Now, this angel in this passage has a dual role. It has two roles. And it's, um, and listen, look, this angel is there to guide and to lead. Okay. And guiding, the angel serves as a protector, shielding the Israelites from harm and danger. Remember, all the way around. Likewise, in our lives, God provides protection from spiritual forces and darkness and ensures that nothing ultimately harms us without his permission. Without his permission. You know, some people, they go through a period of even life, and they, they seem to have it all. Remember King David said, oh, man, why, 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 why does... This person have this and this have that. And I don't have. Look, don't work. One of the things that I know bothers some Christians because I, maybe I, I, I guess if I'm honest with myself, it might have bothered me early on in life. And that is, I have spent a lot of time with my God, and I know I please God. And you know why I know I please God? Because I believe in His Son and the work of His Son. I believe it, and, and He's delighted with that. He's delighted with you because you believe it. And he already said he, he will honor you for that. Well, there, there, there have been times, I guess, early on in life, that I might say, I did all this work and got all of this, and this person just comes along, and 20 minutes later, they're good to go. <laughs> well, you know, well, but is that fair? What? That meant you did a good job. Okay, you did a good job. Okay? 
You know the story about the field workers. They all got paid the same, regardless if they started in the morning or started in the evening. Don't you worry about who getting paid, okay? You just come to work, okay? And so I, I, when I got that all settled, I was good to go. I was good to go. So, so know that you, when you're out there and you're talking with someone, and you're trying to get them. Now remember, regardless of what, who might say this, you cannot pray somebody to salvation. You can't make them take salvation. You can't, make, you can't pray them saved. They got to do it themselves. They got to want that. But what you can do by praying for them to be saved will allow God to put things in their path, be it people or events, something in their path that will make it click. Okay, and make it click. Boom. And they'll get it. And it might not be the first time you talk to them. It might not be the first time someone else talked to them. But down the road, it's going to happen. But in any event, while you're going, knowing that, that God, he's got you. 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 Furthermore, the angel leads the Israelites toward the place God has prepared for them. And you notice in, in both of those translations, it says prepared, it's been prepared. That's it, past tense. God's already done it. God is not going, well, I guess it's about 12 o'clock on Thursday. I, I, I need to get this promised land ready on Friday, so I guess I need to start on it. That's not how it works. No. No. God, God, it's done. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. But anyhow, he said that the, guy, the guidance that this angel is giving them as they're going through, their, their journey. It's not just a physical journey that they're going through that this angel is helping them with. It's also a spiritual journey. Journey. You see, as we're going through life and we're going through our journey, yes, you're moving physically. But if you're letting God lead you and you're going behind it, you are growing spiritually. I always say, uh, people, people ask me, said, um, What's your definition of faith, Robert? And I always tell them, I mean, I got a real simple definition. Believe in what God says. That's my, if you, if you continue to pray and read your Bible and study God's word, you're going to believe more and more what he's saying. Therefore, your faith is going to be bigger and bigger. Nobody starts off with more faith than the other. People build more than some, but the Bible said that we all started with a, well, I'm sorry, with the measure of faith. It didn't say a, that. That's, that article is said, the. That means everybody gets the same amount when they start out. Nobody get an extra. Now, that's my good one. But anyhow, we, we, know, we know that God you know, desires to be, you know, for us to be closer to him while he's laying that future for us and guiding us toward that future. He wants you to trust him. Look, you know, when you, the Bible says that, that Christ said, if you serve me, or any man serve me, my father will honor. Now, the Bible said God so loved the world, so loved the world, so loved the world. It didn't say uh, God so honored the world. But he loves us all. But us, or us that follows Christ, we get to be honored. You know, in the south there, at the, at the big picnic, that would be like you sitting in the back and the food is almost done. And they say, brother, Ronnie, come on up here and get the big piece of rib. You, it's, it's yours. You know, everybody look around. And why is he special? He's special. Girl, he's special. He's getting the big rib. But the thing about it is that God wants to be involved in our lives. And he constantly has shown that even back here before there was such thing as the law and all of that. Okay. Now, it says uh, also in this uh, verse that God has prepared a place. Now, I mentioned that he has prepared a specific place for those. Remember, uh, it's, it's not all over the place. He had a specific place lined up for these people, a specific place. It wasn't over here, over there. No, it wasn't at my house or his house. Or a specific place. God had it all squared away. We know how the story goes. Now, remember, these people went through some ups and downs. We know that. Now, notice I told you that we were looking at uh, uh, verse 20. And God 
talked about sending angels and everything, but in verse 21, remember, it, it, God tells them, if you don't listen to him, some, some, some things can happen, okay? I don't want to get there today, but we want to see that this love of God that's going to send them on their journey and all that good stuff. So he says that, that um, he's prepared a place. And this promise il illustrates the, the faithfulness to fulfill his divine plans in these people's lives. See, God doesn't just leave things to chance, but he has a purposeful, a purposeful, purposeful plan for each of us. You know, Jeremiah said it great. Jeremiah 29, 11. You don't have to turn there. He says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plan to give you hope and a future. Plan to give you hope and a future. Now, how can, uh, how can God make such a statement? Well, it, well it's kind of kind of simple. You know, I'm one of these guys. I like to break it down and make it simple. I don't like to make it, make it and keep it complicated. God can talk about your future because he's there. You see, if you take the Trinity, which we all know about, we know one of the attributes of the Trinity is that God is omnipresent. And what does that mean? He's everywhere at every time, but it's one little piece that people leave off simultaneously. He's in the back. He's in the front and he's in the middle. He's in the past, the present, and the future. He's all place, all the time. That's why I, I get a little bit, some kind of, kind of confused sometimes. You know, in uh, Romans 8, 29, when people, you know, it talks about four new and God then, and he picked this book. Why is that a big deal? God, God didn't pick him. God already knows. He's in the future. He knows. He knows already. He didn't pick him. He knows. You see? So God knows your future. He knows. Amen. The Bible tells that once we get in his hand, and no one can snatch us out of there. You know, your people say, well, you can lose your salvation. No. They tell us that we are hid with Christ in God. Now, God hides something. I don't know who can find it. Oh, I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> who can find that, Okay. Let, let, let us know that we have this great God that protects us. His presence is always with us in the form of the Holy Spirit, for sure. It is there. It is, it is with us. It is with us. So, you know, we can, we can draw great application from this particular verse. One is trusting God's guidance in our lives. You see, the Israelites had to trust the angels' guidance in the wilderness, just like we must trust God in our lives as we're being guided through the Holy Spirit. We have to trust in it. We have to trust in it. Now, don't get me wrong. These people had to believe and follow what the angel was saying, but they had to do something. They couldn't just uh, sit down and lay back and say, all right, we, I guess we're going to show up at the promised land a little later on there. Don't do anything. Don't get it. Don't do it. They had to do something. <laughs> we got to do something. And because you're doing something and you're human, you're not perfect. Man, sometimes you're going to make big boo-boos, as my grandson would call it. You'll make big ones. But guess what? God got you. He got you. I mean, he got you. You know? And when you think that, oh, I don't know, I don't know, is God in this? You don't wait to get into a situation and pray, pray your way out of it. Pray before you get there. Pray before you get there. And then um, whatever happens at that point, and you keep praying, you're going you go to easily hear the Holy Spirit let you know whether God is with you or not on this. And, and if he's not with you, Bounce back, kind of step back. It might not be that he don't want you to have that or do that or whatever. It might not be time. Okay? It might not. I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go from the tangent a minute. You know, everybody knows the story of the, um, the um, one of the sons told his father, said, give me my inheritance. I want to go home. I mean, I'll go. I, I'm ready to leave home. I don't want to stay. I, I want to go. Give me my inheritance. I'm gone. You know the story? And, and the oldest son, you know, he stayed back. You know, he loved his father. Well, that boy went away, it said, and he spent his money on all kinds of wild living and everything and whatnot, found himself eating with the pigs. 
which is a, a abnormal thing for a Jew because Jews don't go around pigs. And so one day this boy said, oh, man, I don't came to the lowest of lowest. I need to go. I'm going back home to my daddy where there's plenty of food. Even the, even the servants got more food than I got going on here, right? So he headed back. Okay, he headed back. Now, on his way back, if someone would have intervened and stopped him and said, man, I know, I see what you're having a hard time. Come on and go with me. I'm going to give you a little job and give you a couple of dollars and everything will be all right. What, is, it, is it possible that he might have never gone home? So I say that to say that things can get in our way or things can occur that can take us off track. We just got to be careful and, and just watch. What is God telling me about this? If that boy had never got home, his daddy would have never came there and brought him back into the family and he would have been a mess, right? So just helping him, you know, some people try to help or do things from the heart. They say, well, you know, it's in my heart to help that person. Uh, well, it is, but is it the right thing? Is it the right thing? So we, we, we must trust God leading in our lives in these uncertain times. And, and that God has come from the Holy Spirit for us. Come on, God's protection. We don't have to fear all these trials and challenges. Just as that angels were, the angels were protecting them out in the wilderness, God's Holy Spirit has us. Now, I'm not telling you that if you walk out here in the middle of that road and stand and, get, and, 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 doubt, and, and, and dare a car to hit you that you don't get ran over. I'm not saying that. But if you're in the will of God, you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff because I bought it, I, I bought it down to two things. If something happens to me, I'd be sad for my family, but man, I'm going to be in the presence of the Lord, which I'm headed for. That's my journey. That is my final destination. I want to be with him. And if I'm okay, it's needful for me to be around for them. You see? So as a Christian, you don't lose. It's the loved ones, and as you're feeling for your loved ones, that's a big deal. But know that through all those trials and all those problems and all those things that go about, you know, you handle them, you get God to help you. You pray about it. You pray, pray, pray. You pray. You pray. Okay? The, um, another thing is we, we need to embrace God's plan in our lives. And some people say, well, I don't know what God's plan is in my life. Hang around God long enough, you'll find out. Okay? You can't pull out the Bible once a year and, and say, well, I, I wonder what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what, what's going to happen now. You, you, you got to get close to him because the closer you get to him, the more he'll talk with you and the more you'll understand. Because he, he, he'll hear you. He'll hear you. He'll hear you. The Bible says that when you pray and you're not sure what you're praying for, the Holy Spirit Made, merged with your spirit and it prays for things that you don't even know you should be praying for. Man, we, we are cut. That great God does that for us. I mean, he's given us a, the spirit, as the Bible say, of sonship. Man. We have truly been adopted. So in, in following his plan, you know, you know, Stick in the will. We know when we're out of the will of God. There's something inside of you that, mmm, mmm, this ain't right. And I'm not talking about, should I have that extra piece of pie? Because me, I talked myself into it. You know? I don't know. The Holy Spirit telling me to get, get this piece now because I might not be able to get it later. You know? but, 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 but anything, that, anything that's going to show up hurt me, I, I trust God to look out for me. I really do. I really do. I really do. And to conclude here, I want to say that, you know, as we remember the words of uh, Exodus 23, 20, we should, we should be cherishing the promise of God's guidance and presence in our lives. We should trust in his guidance, rely on his protection, and embrace his plan for us. We should always seek his will and remember that just as he faithfully led those Israelites through the wilderness, he will be faithful to us too. And you know why? For he is the same 
For he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Thank you, church. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you again.